Can you guys hear me still? Yep. Awesome. All right. Well, as uh, Holly mentioned, we have a very packed agenda, so uh, we'd be better to get going. Uh, open session followed by executive session. Um, as far as the open session is concerned, I'm going to do the regular operational updates provided by Holly. Then, or you know, other people on the staff, we're going to get an update on the community programs. Uh, we're going to talk about the marketing committee charter and how to evolve that. Uh, hopefully followed by the votes. Uh, there's an update on some, uh, you know, branding changes on the logo and the different badges that we want to talk about today. Um, we want to vote on the procurement policy, which has been out there for a while and, um, you know, needs to be approved formally. If you all are on board with that, and last but not least, um, we're going to talk some more about extending the at-large director term by uh, a year. So, and that's just it for the open session. Then we have an even longer list of things for the executive session, as you can see in the uh, board pack. So let's get started with the uh, operational update. Great. So uh, in honor of our very large agenda, I'll just try to keep it um, super short and say that March was super huge for the association. We just really started putting so much great stuff um, out into the community. So we have that big, long laundry list, but, um, you know, just able to celebrate a million sites for Drupal and starting to, we, we implemented our first actual positive proactive change on Drupal.org since starting the D7 upgrade, which I know is long overdue, but still deeply celebrated here internally. <laughs> um, you know, we had a huge global training days, We're starting a user research RFQ, our new CTO started, we started working on a job board, the job board, DrupalCon Latin America was announced, right? And we're, we've been working on some branding changes. So lots of stuff um, from the staff out into the community this, this month, this last month. So it's been really wonderful to start to see all that momentum build and really start to put, you know, much more out there than, than just the cons in a, in a very real and tangible way. Um, and I really owe a huge debt of gratitude to, you know, obviously the great staff here, but also the, um, in particular, the working groups have really been starting to hit their stride and, and get lots of good things out into the world. So um, it's been really great to see that <clears throat> start to take off. Um, and I'm really thrilled that um, Josh Mitchell, the new CTO, is on board and can really take that to an even better place. So that is good. Um, the other quick thing I'll just mention is that we did manage to update the dashboard a little bit with some better um, year-to-date goals. Uh, so we, we mm -hmm. did uh, do a sprint together as staff to figure out, you know, what, what should March actually look like, not just take the annual goal and divide by 12. So there's some changes um, there and, and feel like the numbers are a lot more um, relevant now, which is great. Um, and so we'll see those. We sort of skip through some of the numbers in a minute. Um, and as you look through the rest of the packet, you know, I think that the themes for us are just um, trying to keep up this pace um, is, is going to be a challenge and requires that we get all the right staff on board, um, particularly around Drupal.org. We're starting to build that momentum, but we have to sustain it. Um, that hiring is going to be key. Um, and Josh and Rudy and I have spent a long time talking about uh, that as most of the hires on the tech side are focused on infrastructure this year. Uh, so we're keeping that up. Um, working groups, like I said, are really starting to make some good stuff happen, but um, we have to produce even more, even faster <laughs> to meet some of, to meet all the plans that were laid out for this year. And I think particularly coming out of the software working group, there was a lot of budget there to do things and move stuff forward. And um, we are starting to do that, but we need to pick up the pace there. Um, and that's really leads to this third sort of risk, um, or, or, you know, which is that Drupal.org performance is still, you know, behind where we want it to be um, for the year. So when we look at those numbers, you'll see they're behind. Um, the caveat is that they really are, um, the, they're, they're accelerating out of the red. Uh, they just haven't gotten out of the red yet because we had such a slow start coming out of the end of 2013. So those are the things we're sort of concerned about on a meta level. Um, but uh, uh, if we look at our main KPIs, um, things look really good overall. Um, the one red number, 
not the one, one of the red numbers is the net income. Um, but this one is still keyed towards uh, financials that are um, reporting all of the revenue for the cons in June for often Drupal Con in particular. So we'll see that even as we get closer to the con. It's just nothing to worry about yet. It's just the way we have that um, pegged right now in the dashboard. Um, and then um, average membership spend still continues to be below uh, what we want it to be. Um, but the number of memberships has been really great. So even though the average membership spend is down, the revenue has been on. So we're not missing our revenue number there. Uh, we continue to monkey with that one figure it out. Um, and the other red item is just, you know, Drupal is a percent of the web. Um, you know, that's something, there's a target there that, that we want to hit um, for the year and we're behind. And obviously a lot of that uh, is going to be tied to Drupal 8. And the earlier that kicks out, the more momentum we can build on this number. So, you know, we set a goal with an optimistic assumption about a launch date there. <laughs> Um, it's also one we actually don't have much control over. Oh, exactly. Right. So the main KPIs look good. Like I said, I, I don't think there's a ton of things to report except to um, stop and say for, for Drupal cons themselves, the numbers are reported through March, um, but our, our early bird date was in early April. And so I do want to um, stress that they're all green here, but they're like even better than green. If there was a greener green, I would put it. Um, if you added in their early bird date, I just want everyone to know that um, we hit our early bird goal just a little bit better than what we needed to be to hit 4,000 for DrupalCon Austin. So that's on track. And sponsorship revenue is just over 100% of goal now as well. So everything looks really good to have a very big uh, and another biggest DrupalCon ever. Sweet. Yeah. So DrupalCon's looking great. The area that we're still continuing to put a lot of focus on is Drupal.org. That's the area where you see the most sort of red and yellow numbers. So um, around uh, you know site traffic, number of commits, comments, those sorts of things. Um, and to a degree, we don't have a ton of control, but we know that if we can make Drupal.org an easier tool to use, we can do we can increase the number of comments, the number of commits by you know making it be a friendly place that people want to work in. So we know we have some work to do um, there. Um, in particular, this chunk here in the middle, page response time and test bots, those are infrastructure related things that we're really um, focused on right now. As I mentioned, that's where the, you know, the majority of our hiring left for the year is going to happen. Um, all of those numbers were so far in the red coming into January um, that they're going to stay in the red for a little while longer, but we're getting close to getting out. Uh, in particular, page response time. Um, is getting much, much better. Um, and as we get a CDN st stood up um, around the site, I think we'll, we'll see that get uh, very near, near goal very shortly. Um, but the average was so high in January uh, and going into February that's going to take us a while to bring it down into the green for the year. Um, test bots, um, I just want to point out that um, Jeremy and Ricardo Amaro um, spent a lot of time in Zegged doing uh, work on the test bots. And that and some changes to um, core mean that the average for uh, the average test time in the month of March was just 47 minutes. Um, you can see there's a big difference between March of 47 and the year-to-date actual, which is an average of the all three months, which is still 136 minutes. So we, will, we should get down to that 70 over the next couple of months. So. The average will come down, but um, that was amazing work. Um, so, uh, so yeah, and we should then, uh, with that test time down, be able to test um, as many patches as folks want to throw at us. So hopefully DrupalCon Austin is a huge sprint um, and we're able to get a bunch more core patches um, tested at that event. So those are the numbers. Um, the last um, bit chunk of these landing page traffic, home page, bounce rate, um, these are things that the user RFQ are really um, focused on helping us to address. These are content working group issues, and um, we'll have to you know, continue to work on these throughout the year. Um, they're, they're definitely in the red, um, but um, what's in that crazy, terrible industry average kinds of numbers, but they're not where we want them to be. So that's another area of focus. 
Then there are a lot more words, but they're all good and easy words. Unless you have any <laughs> questions, because I know I just want to keep it keep it moving along for today. <laughs> no questions. Good and easy words. <laughs> <laughs> all right. One well, other milestone let's... we hit in the last month is that Holly Ross has her first patch in core, so that's pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> all right. Hooray! Uh -huh. I saw a tweet about that. Congrats, so, Holly. Web team, if you're pushing pushing commits quickly into core, I have a couple we need to talk about afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, last night when I got stuck in Salt Lake City on my way home from New York, I couldn't sleep, so I was scanning the um, the queue for beginner documentation patches. So watch out! No way! Oh, that's awesome! Yes, only three more to beat Neil Drum. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. Where, in Sorry. the section where there's all these words, I just wanted to make a note, which I mentioned to I think Megan is the next Global Training Day is. Like while all of us are meeting in Austin for our um, retreat and immediately before Austin DrupalCon. Just wanted to flag that I think the timing of the Global Training Days needs a bit of um, attention and love because I think that's going to be tricky for a lot of people. Anyway, I'm done. Okay. Yeah, no, thanks for that. I talked about that with the team and – oh, sorry, I was just going to answer that. Yeah, okay. go for it, Megan. Oh yeah, so we talked about it as the team, and um, you know, it's definitely something we can look at in the future just to watch competing dates. We get so much participation from around the world. TripleCon Austin is going to be pulling so many people from the states, so the rest of the world will continue to, you know, we're still seeing great signups and um, interest from around the world. Um, so it will impact a little bit on the, on, you know, on the. North American companies, but it won't impact our overall goal by any means. It could actually be a plus for you know the rest of the world who can't participate in Austin mm -hmm. to sort of maybe have some acknowledgement that hey, you know this is part of the whole Drupal community. While North America meets over here, all of you are doing these great um, these great trainings or something. But yeah, just thanks, Megan. That's cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I suggest that we move on. And that's okay to the uh, community outreach uh, section of the meeting presented by uh, Stephanie. Yes, and let me just cue that up for you, Great. Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's just scrolling <laughs> on the tiny little thing. Excellent. Well, hi everyone. Um, I just, uh, you know, we we realized that we had brought on um, a new community. Uh, outreach coordinator and had not really told you what was happening so we thought it would be nice to let let you in on what's happening because it's very exciting um, Lauren Shea has been brought on and uh, for the express reason of looking when we look at the vision from our 2014 leadership plan uh, the second point is that the Drupal Association is the heart of a strong Drupal community and we want to grow uh, community leadership globally. So that's really what we're focused on with this position. And if you can scroll down a bit. Um, so the community outreach coordinator is going to, is in the process of identifying community leaders, understanding um, how these leaders motivate and drive the community, understanding why they volunteer their time and energy, to propel and support the Drupal project and evaluate. She's going to be evaluating and making suggestions for programs and growth opportunities. Okay, thanks. Um, and, you know, we can really assist the growth of the adoption by continuing to build a healthy community. So that's, that's what this position is all about. So Lauren, um, you may have seen some blogs of her. She's already blogging. She's tweeting. Um, She's getting out there and meeting a bunch of people. Uh, she's going to be in Stanford this weekend uh, at the camp. Um, but she is responsible for global training days, for webinars, mm -hmm. for Drupal camps, um, kind of overview and, and looking at ways we can continue to support them. She's the liaison for the DA to the community, um, working with the leaders in Europe to assess their needs. And, uh, and kind of an add-on for this year is she's going to be the project lead for uh, DrupalCon Bogota. Um, 
because uh, of resource, we're, we're kind of, we've reallocated her a little bit for that role. So uh, we've already met with the Latin American community for the first time to get that ball rolling. Um, and it's a, a big deal. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big project. Um, she's going to be also looking at program development and making some recommendations. Uh, there's a survey that's just gone out. So um, that's going to be... Um, She'll be evaluating the results of that survey and making some uh, recommendations that we'll be bringing up to the board. And then she's Twitter, tweeting and blogging. Um, yeah. So that's kind of an overview of her. Um, just kind of a, a quick uh, view of where we are. Uh, our first global training days um, in February uh, brought in 34 training companies, which is huge. Uh, and our goal for the entire year is 40 unique companies. And Lauren's already let me know that she has probably six or seven brand new companies already for uh, the May 30th. So I think, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the May 30th. So we're already, I think uh, we might already be at goal or very close to it. I think you actually transposed those from 34 to 43 because we've, we've reported 43 for the last couple of months. Oh, yeah. 43? Not 34, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. So our goal is for 40. Our goal, our goal is 40, and the first one we hit 43. Yes. Ah, okay. Yep. <laughs> well, so. there we go. So we're almost there. <laughs> yeah. Already there. Cool. Um, so that's Global Training Days. And then if you can hit it. Um, community Grants, uh, to give you an update there, we, uh, we have a goal of 21 grants. Um, we want 21 grants applied for for 2014. And right now, we've awarded 11 grants, uh, totaling 16,006. Um, and we have uh, 23, four left for the year to award. So the grants that have been given, you'll see the list below of who we've supported so far. Uh, they're between $5,000 and $500. So a uh, wide range of grants, and all of those folks are doing really wonderful things. So we're pretty excited. Okay. Uh, Drupal Camp Kits and AV Kits. Uh, we had a goal to send 14 of these uh, out in 2014. And so far, we've sent six Drupal Camp Kits and three AV Kits. Um, the fiscal sponsorship, uh, we're going to be doing a webinar in July to, um, you know, let people know more of uh, what that program is all about for those that don't. And what Lauren's looking at is improving, uh, improving this program by really reaching out to the camps, finding out what would be super helpful, and then adding more substance, kind of more marketing swag to the camp kits for 2015. We're going to get that into the budget so that we can actually embellish those kits. Uh, webinars, we have a goal of 1,000 attendees in 2014. Right now, uh, we've had 107, which, um, but we have a ton of webinars coming up, so that number will rise quickly. Um, we have a community uh the Global Training Days community webinar uh, just happened yesterday. We're going to get the video out um, on that. And then we have, these are the ones we have coming up, how to hire great Drupal, Drupal talent and getting more out of Drupal.org. Uh, and then we also have a bunch of supporting partners and tech supporter webinars coming up as well. <clears throat> and, uh, and then Joe is leading the charge on the Drupal 8 series that will happen whenever we can do it, <laughs> whenever it's appropriate to do those. <laughs> so, but uh, that's in the works as well. Uh, so right now we have seven uh, webinars scheduled from April, between April and June. Um, and then just to give you an overview of the leadership survey just went out to approximately 150 global leaders um, identified by our staff and that was sent last week. Um, the purpose of the survey is to find out who are our leaders, identify the roadblocks and successes in the community, and then how we can assist and support their efforts. Uh, so as soon as that results will be reported in May, um, it's it, they're coming in now. I think she said she has over 70 responses so far. So it's a pretty good uh, response rate for 150 being sent out. 
uh, and we'll get back to you with uh, with the results of that. Yep, and that's the update. Yeah, so you can see this person. So Lauren's really focused on um, community in the um, you know global camp sense and not the Drupal.org sense of community. Just want to make that clear. Woot. <laughs> Donna, you're sounding like a tired Rubusella. <laughs> I'm delirious with, with tired. Delirious. I just thought you were an owl hanging out yeah, with the toddler. Yeah. So that's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> now, any, any questions coming out of that or, or thoughts to share? Or just more noises. Awesome. Stephanie, thank you so much for the update and congrats to Lauren for hitting the ground running. This is just great. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And we have we have a whole ton of data from um, from from DrupalCon in Prague that uh, they're just cheering with that we're already talking about now. Some of the stuff we actually did at the um, community summit day the day before uh, DrupalCon in Prague. Uh, yeah. and finally now get time to, to move on. So um, I would say from from community perspective, it's really really nice to see that we're putting putting uh, people and staff to help us out with this because it's it's a lot of things we need to fix. So I'm happy. Good deal. Great. She's great too. She's really a go getter. Awesome. Exciting. Um, all right. Next up is the uh, marketing committee charter updates. I don't know who's going to present this. Is that going to be Joe or? So Bethany actually we're able to unmute her and Yeah, so Betsy, I just unmuted you and if you looks like your you have muted your microphone. So if you unmute yourself, you can type up. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um Okay, great. Um so Yes, this was one of the first tasks. So I rotated in in January, and prior to that, I believe you guys had spent some time um, developing a process for um, selection and approval of the chair position. So uh, we are just re proposing to revise the committee charter to have a selection and approval process for committee members. And um, as the summary says, this just is limited to the composition and selection section, uh, which is listed below in its current form. Um, followed by the proposed form, and um, we have established uh, a term length of one year and a rotation of incoming chair or committee members in January and July to kind of um, to continue to have continuity between uh, the committee members and not having everybody uh, rotate in at once. Um, the other big change is that we're proposing to revise the size of the committee um, down from 15 to just five members and to start to leverage the power of more volunteer contributors uh, to accomplish the, uh, the committee goals. Um, and we have also um, dropped the requirement since the, uh, the committee will be a lot smaller um, to just include um, one board member or an advisory board member. The previous requirement was that there was one of each on the committee. And then um, the other one was just removing the provision for um, the meetings to be open to all Drupal Association members, um, but that they are open to all Drupal Association staff. So I guess, does anybody have any questions or concerns at this point? Um, could you, could you um, uh, repeat the, the, the last thing that you said, uh, that it uh, used to be that it would be open to all Drupal Association members, mm -hmm. and now we're talking about Drupal Association staff. Can you, yes. can you, talk, about, can you talk about that just for a sec? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that was, um, so one of the goals um, of the committee is just to um, be very focused on um, moving actual items forward. Um, we didn't, I, I, I don't, if that's like a big sticking point, I think we can definitely add it back in, but um, we were just thinking that for the sake of um, efficiency that we would just kind of keep the committee meetings focused and provide um, follow-up as to um, what we're has, doing in the, in the committee. Has there been a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, noise coming from the community as a whole? No. 
Okay. It's a, there, there's been, um, I would say that lack of involvement has been one of the problems for this committee. This, this is Joe Saylor. I'll just add the, the last bullet point there um, is meant to accommodate, for instance, myself being able to join the meetings without needing to take an actual spot, uh, one of the five spots on the committee. Right, right. I get that. I get that. Um, it seems like if you were, you were talking about, and when we talk about Drupal associate, Association members prior to that, are we talking, can, can, what, what, what do we mean by that at this point? Well, I think, um, I guess it would be anybody who is an active Drupal Association member. So we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, like... so uh, I guess what I'm trying to, trying to figure out okay. is if we're, if we're trying to, if we're reducing the possible number of people that could, uh, that could, uh, um, come to one of these committee committee meetings. Is that the goal? Um, I think it, so. I think the goal, the overall goal, is that um, what we saw with the previous committee is that there were a lot of people that were opting in to be on the committee, but not um, fully participating. So, in an effort to re-energize the committee this year. We're looking at having a, a, a smaller committee that's really focused on taking leadership roles in different areas mm -hmm. and then leveraging a larger like volunteer community to kind of help um, with the actual execution of those initiatives. Okay, I get so that. Um, I get to, I, oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I guess I'm, I'm caught up on the sentence, committee meetings shall be open to Drupal Association staff. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's the change. That, 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 that to me, that to me yells, I, we don't want people to, to, uh, to be involved. And, 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 and it reads to me, it reads to me personally as, as, as something that's reducing transparency and that troubles me. Okay. So yeah, would Betsy, you is it possible to use wording along the lines of what you just said? Like, you know, the meetings yeah. will be open to anybody who's willing to basically do something? <laughs> Maybe yeah. Little... I, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, this is, uh, like I said, this is just a proposed draft. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, any of that language can be changed. So, But, like, uh, I think that would help get it to, because, yeah, I, I agree with Matthew. I think if, especially if the diff or whatever is required, is, a, is like supplied on this, the community is going to reach the wrong assumption here, which is that we're closing off marketing to community participation and making it a DA thing only, which is okay. actually the opposite of what you're trying to do. What you're trying to do is involve community participation, but just have a smaller group kind of calling the shots so you guys can actually make decisions and do things, right? So, okay. So, I mean, if we drop the line about uh, it being open to uh, the Drupal Association staff, um, I'm assuming that doesn't prevent Drupal Association staff members from actually attending the meeting. I don't no. think it does. Um, so I think yeah. So and I don't actually have um, edit rights on this document, I believe. So um, oh. Holly, if you want to just go ahead and delete that, that's I mean I, I think that it sounds like everybody's in agreement on that. Um, yeah, no, personally, I was fine with the sentence. Like oh. I didn't, I didn't. I mean, I guess it was it could be misinterpreted, but in my mind, it was not a negative sentence. But. It Alarm was, bells went off for me personally. Yeah. No, actually, and, I, and, I, and I believe you. <laughs> okay, so what if we juxtaposition that you were removing um, removing provision for all of these people and adding pro provision for just staff? I think it was actually the, the proximity of those two things <coughs> seem like it's reducing. So I, I think the the line could stay because it is, it has clarity that staff are welcome and staff are part of this process, but it probably just needs somewhere else for it to have that broader, that sense that, you know, all are welcome, blah, 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 but we need to get on with things. Well, so in the, in the previous <laughs> sentence, it says the committee may choose to organize itself into subcommittees to facilitate the accomplishment of its work. And I mean, could we just add, like, comma, yeah. and any Drupal Association member in good standing is, um, you know, encouraged to participate in these subcommittees yeah, as a volunteer works. capacity. Nice. I think that sounds great, and yeah. and and uh, is the is the assumption that uh, that because it's um, all community members in good standing is the assumption that we have some association staff that aren't 
in good standing, and that's the reason that they need to have a special a special status. Because it seems to me that if we if it's open to anybody in the community, mm-hmm. then it's open to anybody in the community. So the the language is actually Drupal Association members. So there's a there's actually a payment involved there, a fee. So I right. think the good standing part of it means if they are in arrears on their fees. Uh, totally, totally get that. Totally get that. I, I'm I'm still caught. I'm still getting caught up on that last sentence. If we're talking about leaving it in, because then then the the uh, the the sentence implies that that uh, that folks in, in who are uh, on the Drupal Association staff may not be Drupal Drupal Association members themselves in good standing. Anyway, I'm. I'm going to leave it at that. I personally think just blitzing the sentence does the same thing. I think um, we should blitz the sentence. I think it should be gone. Unless, unless Joe, was that put in there because people were saying um, DA staff is not welcome? Because no, that doesn't make any sense to me. Not at all. Just trying to put it in black and white uh, that the you know, staff would not be taking any slots on you know, one of those five slots. Yeah, and that's cool. That stuff. Then we should say that. That I think what I, I would propose is that, that 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 sentence be revised to say, um, Drupal Association staff are also available to participate in um, committee meetings, are also you know, eligible or available or whatever, because um, it, it sounds like that's the clarification that you wanted yeah. to provide. Yeah. So I think if we just leave it there, then it's it's um, it accomplishes what everybody's trying to get at. Plus one. So edited. Great. Great. Looks good to me now. Betsy, are you okay with that? Yeah, no, that sounds good to me. Okay. Any other comments, remarks, questions? Uh, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. I, I agree. It'll be uh, it'll be good good if we can uh, sort of. Um, restarts or like get some uh, more momentum for the marketing committee. Mm-hmm. So if, if people like this, um, maybe somebody can um, create a motion because we will have to approve this by, by voting. Um, I'll move that uh, we accept the uh, proposed language for the marketing committee revised charter. Second. Great. All, maybe all those in favor say aye. 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 Oh, did we get a second? Tiffany. Yeah, there was Tiffany. Uh, oh, uh, there was a second, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, all right, let's try it again. All those in favor say aye. 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 No one uh, seems to be opposed. Is that right? Yeah, is anyone opposed? If you are, say nay. All right. I think that's approved or accepted. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Great job. Thanks, Betsy. All right. Next up, uh, the branding updates. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is Joe again. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed since I've uh, been here for, for about a year, Holly, if you want to go to that first slide there, is uh, that we have some uh, visual identities that are inconsistent, um, you know, perhaps outdated in some cases, or in other cases, there is no visual identity for a, a, you know, a given program. Um, and one of the uh, most acute issues, I think we can all agree, is with the, the badges. There have been a number of uh, attempts to update the badges over the last uh, couple of years. And uh, a few months back, Deason um, volunteered to create us some new badges. Um, and Holly, if you want to do that. So we've, we've actually rolled these out. You may have seen some communication on, um, on these new badges. Uh, 
and we now have not just uh, member badges for individuals and organizations, but we have badges for uh, partners and uh, board members as well. Um, we, we really like these. Uh, we've gotten great feedback on them. And uh, we thought that it actually was a good opportunity to take a look at these badges and uh, think about um, the overall visual identity of this, the association. And uh, one of those uh, things is the Drupal Association brand itself. Uh, if you see it there on the top, that that logo, if you will, it's not really a logo, but it, it was created. <laughs> it was actually created um, uh, along with several other treatments, uh, Drupal groups, for example, um, as a way to give a, a consistent visual identity to the Drupal.org subdomains. So it wasn't um, developed with it being a logo um, in mind. So what we've done is we've taken this, um, this badge design and um, tried, oops, tried to um, tried to take it a step further into, ah, why is this thing this? Uh, go side to side, not up and down. There we go. Into a new logo for the association. So you'll note that the uh, icon mark there on the left is uh, taken directly from the center drop from the badges, and then it uh, uses the Drupal word mark. And instead of the association being out to the side in an inline format, it brings the association wording down underneath the Drupal um, word mark. Um, and then what we hope to do is take this look and actually extend it into a visual system that we can use on other things as well. So global training days, for example, um, and uh, grants, uh, scholarships, um, and other things that, you know, part of the goal here is also to create some consistency so people know when they see something like Global Training Days, uh, they understand that that's a Drupal Association uh, program because we know um, that there is a lot of confusion about the programs that we provide today, and I think part of that is due to the um, inconsistent visual branding that we have. So a couple of notes about that, uh, that logo. It uses a flat design, very simple design um, that, as you probably know, is very much in style these days. I think Apple has really taken the lead on the flat and simple design, and, and now um, everyone seems to be adopting it. And um, so it, it is very much in style right now. Uh, again, the drop shape is taken directly from the new badges. And again, we do hope to extend that look into a visual system. Not sure exactly what that will look like yet, but um, it will uh, no doubt continue to use that drop uh, within the blue circle and apply it where we need it. Uh, and also with our existing uh, brand with the Drupal and association out to the right, it's a very uh, long and thin implementation that we have a lot of difficulty placing in spaces that call for a more square or a tall image. So we'll have a lot more flexibility around that. So next steps is uh, I hope to work with a designer to, um, to extend this visual system a little bit to things like global training days and uh, community grants and things like that to, to try to create some consistency. And uh, we hope to roll out this new uh, logo probably in the next month. I actually need to come up with a plan and a timeline for um, for rolling this out uh, and communicating it to the community. But um, my hope would be that it would be out there uh, by next month, and then the visual uh, system with other things like global training days, etc., would be uh, probably more toward the end of next month or possibly even into June. So, any questions, thoughts, concerns? Joe, this is awesome. I'm very really happy to see this. I have, I have some design uh, proposals or ideas to it, but we can take that offline. No reason to use people. It's time here. Uh, I have a ton of ideas. Um, for, for I'm not a designer, but uh, I think it's a massive improvement. Yeah, I think they're Thank gorgeous. Thank you so much, Joe. Like, I, I'm one of those people who've been tracking, oh my god, can we get our badges 
changed already, <laughs> and it's so nice to finally see it done. Thank you so much for bringing this home. It's great. I would I would love to see these as, as actually stickers at uh, JubilCon and Austin to see that stuff on people's laptop. I think that would be a, a pretty badass thing. I know that I've been carrying on a, a small little Drupal Association stick on, on my old phone, and, and kind of the amount of people who asked me into that sticker was pretty high. So um, mm, I've got one. To, I managed. That's to actually a great package. idea. That's yeah. a wonderful idea. Have little individual uh, member stickers or whatever on your laptop. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. I would. I do think that board members we should have like a, a crown on top of it. Tiara. And on that note, such a princess. My only other thought is that I don't even know if we need to announce this to the community versus just like just change it. I agree. Uh, I would I would like to see us just changing it and then work. I would I would love to see the uh, I know as as the staff moves forward, um, you know, designs when you put that into a design manual, especially for a non profit organization like us, it, it gives sense to have a design manual, but you don't want to lock yourself down. So, you know, when when we're working with designers, we find new new ideas or new things they could improve. We don't lock ourselves in. That was kind of what we did with the old um, you know, design. Also, I, we had to do that though. So, I do think that as as general direction, this is this is a wonderful starting place. And that's just I would love just just to see us uh, begin to use it as quickly as possible. Agreed. Yeah, and I don't think the idea is to like do a big press release and everything, right? But like when we do the changeover, we would probably put a post up on our blog that says, "Yeah, we we did a, a, an update with the new badges. Just you know, hey, here are the new badges. We hope you like them." And we alluded to the fact that we were going to be updating the logo. And so my thought was just like another blog post saying, you know, hey, as a follow up to the previous blog post, here's the new logo. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think I, I think really it's what I versus going through. A feedback cycle or something. Oh yeah, 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 no. Honestly, I think we should just move forward. the The old logos is um, is a complete mess, and you know, if, if we first open up this bike shit, uh, I can I can I could sit here and use a couple of hours of whine about the color tones and stuff. But I mean, let's just move forward. <laughs> I agree. Let's not back shit it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Even that I hate the gray in the Drupal Association logo. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, right. sorry, I came out. I couldn't have keep it back. Let's well, start. Let's <laughs> try. Let's try, Quickly move on. Quickly yeah. move on to. I will hold my hand over my mouth. <laughs> there we go. Right. We're on to a new great. topic. Look at that. Great, great job, Joe. And uh, let's talk about it. Uh, procurement policies. Okay, so that's me. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, work sort of started out of actually the, for me, started out of our conversation um, last January, in January of, um, or February of 2013. Uh, it's my first board retreat. Um, one of the things we started talking about is the financial policies and procedures. I, at least I did that with Tiffany, uh, and I had a, a few side conversations with folks about the need for um, some kind of policy to govern um, how and why we pay people versus ask them to volunteer. Um, and so we need some guidelines in place. Uh, we put a draft together um, earlier this year, put it up on GDO and the ADO blog, asked for feedback, got some good feedback, and incorporated it. And I, I know we didn't hear from everyone in the community, uh, but we did, we did hear some good feedback. Um, and so with that, drafted this policy, um, which I sent over to you guys uh, a little bit earlier, last month, I think. So uh, you've had it for a little bit of time. Um, but the basics uh, lays out two things. Uh, what, one, how do we know when we want to pay someone versus ask for them to volunteer? Um, and we've designed this so that it's not, there are no hard and fast rules. Uh, but these are the kinds of considerations we would take into account and would lead us to say we think it is, um, you know, paid versus volunteer. Uh, so, for example, um, if it's something that needs to be fixed by tomorrow, uh, we might not want to spend the next 24 hours finding a volunteer if there isn't one that's super self-evident, right? Uh, we would spend that time instead 
maybe paying someone to take care of it. Um, maybe paying someone, even if they're it, maybe paying the person who might volunteer because we're going to interrupt their whole schedule to get it done by tomorrow. Right. So responsiveness and urgency, is it, um, mission critical? Uh, if the thing is something that impedes core development, for example, that might lead us to think that we're going to hire a contractor. Um, is the, is the project, uh, discreet? So, um, is it something that, you know, ends like you, you do it and you can walk away or is it something that goes on and on forever um discrete projects are better suited towards volunteers but of course we do have a long history of volunteers like jeremy and narayan who have been engaged in sort of never-ending sagas forever um you know uh, we also have a long history of volunteers like jeremy and narayan being extremely tired <laughs> and occasionally grumpy right so we don't want to burn those guys out um so that that's a consideration. Um, if it's a, a unique skill set, so um, you know if, that it's, if it's something that is um, particular to just a few people uh, in the community, I think uh, an example here in particular is there aren't a ton of people that really know their way around project module, for example. That's a consideration. Um, does it make it easier for volunteers to work? So if it's something that um, actually uh, it creates an improvement to the Drupal.org contribution process. Um, it might be worth paying someone to do that work, to get it out there faster, to increase the participation velocity of more volunteers. Um, and then, of course, is there a volunteer there who's just ready and willing? Because sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. So um, we'll, we'll have to take that into consideration. So it's just a, it's a framework, uh, but not a, um, you know, a, these, these conditions are not mandatory, right? Um, and of course, all of these would still be governed by our contract rules. So if we decided to go the contractor route, we would then be bound by our competitive bidding policy. So anything over $25,000, we would bid out. Um, and then the other section in here is in-kind trades. And the concept here is that occasionally we have companies that want to provide us with services um, in exchange for uh, promotion or sponsorship opportunities, things like that. Um, and so getting a policy in place allows us to take, you know, make use of those trades when they're available to us. Um, and uh, again, we set up some, some bullet points that we would consider a framework for it. So I think the two most important things, we actually need the service. Um, and we do have lots of folks that come to us and have ideas and want to fuse their product, but we don't really need it right now. Um, and sometimes they want to, they want to offer up things that we, we probably do need, but we really don't have the staff or capacity to use it, right? So we're not going to make trades for stuff just because it would be nice to have those things uh, when we can't actually make use of them and, and get the value out of it. Um, we would also uh, make sure these were subject to the public bidding process. So if someone was offering us a, a service of you know $25,000 or more, uh, we wouldn't just take the first offer that came along. Um, we would actually say, hey, we need this thing, and uh, we're willing to enter in entertain in-kind trades for it. Uh, anyone who's interested in bidding, here's what you can do, uh, and, and here's the process we go through. Um, and, of course, uh, to keep it all legal, uh, all goods and services as part of an in-kind trade will be recorded on our books so that they are nice and clear for the auditors, but also nice and public for the community. Uh, that way everyone knows what we're up to. So those are the two pieces. Questions and comments about that? Very quiet. Um, I, th I, think, I think that it's uh, clear, um, makes sense. Uh, is uh, it, it makes very clear um, how we want to how we want to uh, uh, behave and uh, it's exactly what a, a policy ought to do. So um, I uh, the at least the the spirit of the language that's in here I think is really good. Might need a little bit of wordsmithing, but uh, okay. I think, um, by and large, I think that the spirit of the language in here is really good. I did forget my the one rule that I really remember from English class, which is the word very is stupid and you should never use it. <laughs> For me, it was also very clear and um, 
my English isn't good enough to wordsmith. So. Um, I'd be happy to help wordsmith it if you want. Well, I, I told the same I... honest to yeah, my English is way not good enough to do wordsmithing on this own. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping that we can uh, adopt it today. Um, and I'm not sure if we want to do that and then wordsmith it. Uh, we certainly don't want to adopt it and then wordsmith it because we'll need to... Um, what, well, what I mean, we could... Wordsmithing? Sorry? Uh, like I... We... I, I I just you know scroll, uh, uh, it's very it's very um, um, it's it, it doesn't read like a like a policy to me it reads which more I like actually a see as a benefit I actually like it the way it's written okay um, so I'm I'm actually supportive of moving forward with the policy as is I think it's very easy to understand for a layperson it's consistent with the tone of the, the policies that we've been turning out so I'd, I'd rather not delay I think it's had enough review and I'd like to see it put in place I think we need it yeah I, I second that I think let's just get it done I don't think it needs to be perfect and the perfect is the enemy of the good and this is good so let's get it done All right. I mean, if, if anybody want to hammer holes in it they probably can but uh, that's yeah. Let's rather get moving. I mean, that's the change in being proactive, right? So we don't use all our time on on small little details. So I actually would um, move to approve it as is. Second. Aye. All right. If there's it doesn't sound like there's more discussion, so let's um, everybody that's in favor say aye, and people. Not in favor, say no. Aye. 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 Were there any nays in so, there? There were not. I, did, I didn't hear any no's, no. Awesome. Thank you. That, that is also approved. Um, thanks for all the work on this and uh, the feedback from the community as well. So, not only thank you to Holly and the staff, but to everyone that helped. Yeah, thank you guys. One more right. vote. That's right. And the next vote is extending the at large director term by one by year. Um, Holly, do you, do you want to explain this? Yeah, sure. So um, at our last board meeting, um, we, Donna prepared a proposal and we voted to approve a proposal. Not we, you voted to approve a proposal. Um, to change up how we do elections so that we're um, uh, at large director terms are now two years and one director is elected every, every other year so that their terms are staggered. Uh, and we, we got that part all approved. Uh, the thing that we forgot to do, uh, although we discussed it, we didn't formally vote on it. Uh, the thing we forgot to do was formally extend Matthew's term by one year so that he would be our first two year term director since um, Morton in effect has done that by being elected a second time. Um, so, so, uh, so we need to vote to do that for um, Matthew's term. Matthew also needs to agree before we do that. Again. Yeah, I've already, I've already uh, spoken with, uh, yes. with Holly. I'm happy to, I'm happy to do it. So I, I, I move that we extend the, at, well, the current, the most recently elected at-large director's term, being Matthew Saunders, by one year so that we can move to two-year staggered terms. I will second that. Any, uh, any objections from anyone? Can I reword the vote as do we move to, uh, you know, do we accept Matthew's term to be extended until, what's the date? Would it be February of 2015? 16. 2016? Yeah, because right now his term would run to February 2015 automatically. That's his year. Plus a we couple of months. this year? We voted yeah, last that, year, didn't we not? So, so Matthew would have started in uh, officially on the 1st of November in 20, 2013. Would, would have been the okay. start of Matthew's term. So we're doing two things. I mean, it would have been from the 1st of November 2013 to the 31st of October 2014, but we're wanting to extend out to 2015 for the reasons that we discussed last time. And then, so Matthew's term would be through till 
February 2016. February so 2016. Extending a year and a bit. Um, okay. Great. Sorry, I just want to be precise because I what I didn't attend the last board meeting and I just want to make sure what I write down is factual. Yeah, so the vote is: do we useful. do we extend? Um, do we agree to extend Matthew Saunders' term until Saunders's? term until February of 2016. Excellent. Correct? Yep. I move that. All right. What should yes. Good. Second, anyone second that? Oh, Morton, you did, didn't you? Re-second. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. As a, as a principal, I think that, that makes, makes sense. That, uh, <laughs> so, yes. Any objections from anyone? Um, I'm go I'm going to abstain from the vote. That's a good idea. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Uh, yeah. I think it would be a wonderful way to start by voting yourself in. <laughs> yeah, you know that. We do politics right. <laughs> all right, well, nobody uh, objects, so I think we can uh, also approve this. So, congrats, Matthew. You'll be stuck with us a little longer. I'm all right with that. You're a good, you're a good lot. <laughs> so much voting. Great. Any uh, any final comments or remarks from anyone before we move to executive session? Well, well thank you everyone for the meeting. I think. Um, we're, I think we're on the track, probably, to, to finish on time. Um, we're going to adjourn and then switch to the, the other uh, conference bridge. Thanks, guys. See you on Thank the other side. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. You.